Hello everyone, I'm Kate Baldwin. It is a week of remarkable split screen moments. On one side of the screen, you have the man who said in 2017, not so long ago, that he would take a bullet for President Trump. Michael Cohen, Trump's longtime personal attorney on Capitol Hill for the first of three days of testimony behind closed doors and in public, all having to do with President Trump, the first time Cohen, who's about to report to prison for, among other things, lying to Congress, the first time he's going to detail in public Donald Trump's role in some of his crimes. So what will he say? And then on the other side of the split screen, you have the president just landing in Vietnam, arriving in Hanoi for his second summit with the North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. But after weeks of lowering the bar for success and lowering expectations, what's actually going to come of this meeting? And how will headlines back here at home impact what the president does overseas? Let's get to it. CNN's Manu Raju is on Capitol Hill for us right now. So, Manu, there is a ton going on there right now. Michael Cohen, let's talk about him. What is he telling Congress? What is he expected to tell Congress? Well, this uh, hearing that's been happening right behind me in closed door setting for the Senate Intelligence Committee has been going on for about 90 minutes or so. And Republicans and Democrats are eager to hear why he lied to this very committee about a range of issues, but namely about that Trump Tower Moscow project that occurred during uh, late 2015 into 2016 and why he discounted it at the time. Now, we have now since learned after Cohen's guilty plea uh, that he did so to according to Cohen, to protect the president. But why did he do that? What was the extent of the president's involvement? All questions that Republicans and Democrats plan to push Cohen on in this private testimony. Now, quickly, I uh, quickly was able to catch up with Richard Burr, the chairman of the committee, and he said this when asked about what he wanted to hear from Cohen. What's, what's, that's the most important thing to know. Yeah. True. Now, he also went on to say that he has a, quote, questionable track record uh, when asked about whether he could trust Michael Cohen testifying. And that's something the White House has jumped on to this morning, uh, criticizing Cohen for pleading guilty to lying and saying that he can't be trusted. Sarah Sanders saying in, in a statement that it's laughable that anyone would take a convicted liar like Cohen at his word and pathetic to see him given yet another opportunity to spread his lies. But we do know, Kate, that tomorrow, uh, will be a pretty dramatic moment on uh, which Cohen will detail a number of activities that he did uh, with the president, alleging the president's uh, involvement in some of these crimes uh, in providing new detail that we have not seen before. The question is how much corroborating evidence does he provide? Uh, the committee wants to hear some of that as well. And Elijah Cummings, uh, who's the chairman of the committee, uh, told some of us last night that he has been in consultation with the Southern District of New York, which, of course, uh, was involved in that investigation of Michael Cohen and the president's uh, involvement in this hush money payments to silence women during the 2016 campaign. Cummings said he's been in consultation with them and with special counsel Robert Mueller's team to determine exactly what questions they plan to probe. So while Russia may not be the dominant mm -hmm. focus in tomorrow's public hearing, it is behind closed doors today. And tomorrow we'll hear a lot more about Trump Organization activities and those hush money payments and what the president did and did not do, according to Michael Cohen. Kate. I think that is fascinating bit of information that you're getting from Cummings right there, Manu. Great reporting. Thank you so much. All right, so joining me right now, CNN political commentator Mia Love. She's a former Republican congresswoman from Utah. Tim Romer, former Democratic congressman from the great state of Indiana. Nothing against Utah, congresswoman. You know I'm biased. <laughs> and also CNN legal analyst Jennifer Rogers, a former federal prosecutor with the Southern District of New York. Thank you all so much for being here. Can I just start with what Manu just told us about what Elijah Cummings said? That he's been consulting, Jennifer has consulted with SDNY and and the special counsel's office as to not interfere with his line of questioning with what they're discussing. And also a little bit more from his reporting. In addition, it says there are no topics that are off limits in Cohen's testimony today behind closed doors before the Senate Intelligence uh, Committee, according to a source familiar with his testimony. I I find that fascinating. What does that tell us? Well, it's interesting. I was one of the people, Kate, who thought that maybe we wouldn't hear a lot of exciting things from Cohen tomorrow because there are ongoing investigations right. and likely prosecutors wouldn't want him to talk about those. If you believe Cummings in his list, it looks like the, the testimony can be quite broad and hit all sorts of areas. Hush money payments, the inaugural committee stuff, Trump organization misdeeds, of course, his lying, Cohen's lying to Congress right. and the reasons behind that and who may have coordinated with him. So we'll see. It concerns me a little bit. I mean, if Southern District and the special counsel's office really don't care what 
he says. Does that mean that they are not planning to charge anyone else? Mm. That is a possibility. Or they just don't care. They're getting ready to charge. Everything's kind of already out okay. there in the public eye. And it doesn't bother them that someone who may be charged imminently will kind of know from the testimony that Cohen provides information against them. So we don't know. But all of those topics, according to Cummings, are on the table. So we'll see. So uh, Jennifer Rogers rightly points out, in a world where we read into everything, we should try to avoid reading into it <laughs> because we don't know exactly what the special counsel or SDNY means by it. But it is still fascinating. And of course, I wonder then if there is a glaring topic that is avoided by members of Congress, by Cummings specifically, right. does that mean that is something that the special counsel and SDNY, that, that is the, that's where they're actively investigating? That's where they're actively focusing on. Um, what do you think the big questions are that he's going to face tomorrow? Uh, well, I think, first of all, he, they're going to be tough questions. Obviously, you've got members of Congress that just want to get information on record. Now, one of the things mm -hmm. that we have to be very clear about, there is one word that's associated with Michael Cohen, and that is lies, lie, 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 liar, right? So um, I think that there's a credibility, credibility issue in terms of what information that he provides. He's obviously going to be looking out for himself. The other thing, in my experience, that you, everyone needs to watch out for is that this is going to be a moment moment for members of Congress to try and find areas where they can make a uh, some sort of like viral moment happen with social media. Oh, this so is the definition. This of is like a show. It's, it's actually, yeah, I would, I would call it a combo deal. Wouldn't you, Ambassador, Congressman, whichever one I decide to call you at this moment, to, uh, for all of us to have a resume that we could have to choose which title to use. Um, it, it, it's a dog and pony show. Mm -hmm. It's a moment for members to make a moment. Yeah. But it's also really important. I don't, I, I don't know if those two things can exist at the same time on Capitol Hill, but the hearing is important. It's the first time publicly that someone with Michael Cohen's knowledge of things um, to detail what went, he says went down and what the president directed him to do. So I'm not sure what to think. Well, you talk about an impressive resume, Kate. You come from Goshen, Indiana, where I had my You've first won me political over. job. I love <laughs> Goshen, Indiana. The Olympia candy store, oh, one of my favorite started. places. Look, yes, both could take place at the same time. As Mia said, Republicans are going to say this is a liar going to prison for lying to Congress. But on the other hand, you have Democrats and responsible Republicans who are going to say, we've heard a lot about Paul Manafort bringing jeopardy to the president of the United States. This guy really potentially brings jeopardy to the president because he's on the inside. He's the so-called fixer. He may have documents. He may have tapes. He may have all kinds of incriminating evidence there. And then furthermore, Kate, we may hear about, uh, I hear reports that some uh, reporting might come in from mm -hmm. him saying that Alan Weisselberg, the CFO of the Trump organization, was also part of the hush payments. Was he directed from above for that? Does that well, introduce jeopardy to look, the president? There, and, and when it comes to someone who has been convicted, uh, who has admitted to lying right. to Congress, um, he already, yes, he has a credibility. There is a credibility uh, question there. But if he has a document, if he has tapes, if, if there's more to come, do you think, even if, there, even if it, he has something like that, do you think there is any openness amongst Republicans right now to have their minds changed by what they will hear from Michael Cohen tomorrow? Well, I think that it depends on how open-minded they go into the hearing. Most of the time, when you go into these hearings, you're prepared for the questions that you're going to ask. Which means you you've decided. To, well, but you've either decided or you know exactly what you want to get at. Yeah. I, I don't think you're going to find in this hearing, I would be very surprised if you see any Republican break ranks and say, oh, well, okay, this is the smoking gun. I mean, um, for the most part, I, there, there are people that are honest on both sides and they just want to get to the truth. And then you've got some people that are just trying to make as much noise as possible, get some sort of clip that they can play in their districts. Right. And this is, um, you know, this is going to be something that is going to help them and help their, it's, and help it, their. It, you, we also get to motivation, right? And, and this is what I'm struck, Jennifer, I want to get your take. Someone in Michael Cohen's position, um, at this moment, he's about to report to prison in May for what he's pleaded guilty to and his crimes. Is he, do you think, is there more motivation to lie? Is there more motivation to tell the truth? I don't know if that's anything. 
What have you, in your experience, where is the motivation when someone is in a position that Michael Cohen is in? So Michael Cohen is not a traditional official cooperator, right? He didn't sign a cooperation agreement because he wasn't willing to disclose all of his own and other right. people close to him criminal right. activity. But his incentives are to tell the truth, and here's why. He still has an opportunity, if he chooses to pursue it, to get from the prosecutors a post-sentencing cooperation letter that allows him to get time off of his prison sentence. If that is what he's going for, he has to do what he decided not to do previously, which is to come clean on everything, to tell the truth on everything. The prosecutors will go verify all of that information, and if they decide that he's being truthful and he's willing to cooperate going forward, they will write him that letter. That is his incentive. 